Welcome to How to Calibrate the Eye Tracker. I'm DeWitt Fortenberry. I'm Sindhu Nagarakanti. And we're going to walk you through how to set everything up. First, let's talk about the system layout. There are two PCs and four screens, so it's important to understand how they're connected. To begin, the display PC is this black CPU underneath the desk from the experimenter's view. It is connected to these two monitors directly above it. The screen on the left is only visible to the experimenter, while the screen on the right is visible to both you and the participant. This is the keyboard and mouse that you will use as the experimenter to open up the experiment and begin calibration. This is the monitor that's visible to the participant and it is the monitor that is located on the right when you're looking at it from the experimenter's view. The distance between the monitor and the headrest and the camera in the headrest has already been measured. The yellow tape and the green tape marks the correct positions of both the monitor and the camera. So try to make sure that everything is set within this tape. There are no controls in here for the participant to control the screen, but there are speakers that you can control with the display PC from the experimenter side. This other CPU is the iLink itself. It is controlled partly by the keyboard and mouse located here, and it can also be controlled by the Cetris box off to the right. This box is usually used for experiments where the participant is supposed to give either one of two responses. So it could be the blue button could be for two and the red button could be for one, for example. This is the screen that is connected to the host PC, also known as the iLink. This is what you'll see from the experimenter side. It is controlled by the keyboard and the mouse highlighted in green. This is how we will communicate with the participant. There's a camera and a microphone located in the eye tracking room. The participant does not have any controls to increase or decrease the volume. This is controlled from the experimenter side. This white device is what you will use to increase and decrease the volume to be able to talk to the participant. While speaking to the participant, be sure to hold the microphone button at the bottom. While increasing and decreasing the volume, you will use the right button to increase and the left button to decrease the volume. Be sure to decrease the volume all the way whenever you're ready to take the participant out of the room. This will ensure that there is no echo effect between the speaker and the microphone. Now let's talk about getting the participant set up and comfortable in the eye tracking room. This represents the correct setup of a participant in the eye tracking room. Usually what we will do is have the participant put their forehead on the forehead bar after cleaning it off and explaining the procedures that will take place in the experiment. Once they put their forehead on the bar, make sure that they're in a comfortable position where they're able to easily focus on the top quarter of the screen. Once their forehead is comfortable in the bar, then you will raise this chin rest to meet their chin. Make sure that they are resting comfortably on the chin rest whenever it is lifted. We also have seat cushions available for our shorter participants, but as you can see, this did not help Sindhu. As you can see, her back is more hunched over and now she's not able to easily focus on the top quarter of the screen. For some participants, we will even use two seat cushions, but as you can see, this was even worse for Sindhu. This is not recommended because over time, especially with longer experiments, participants will complain of back pain and it may affect the data. So now Cinda will walk through calibrating the eye tracker. 
Calibrating the eye tracker is an extremely important step in making sure that the experiment you are running and the data that you are receiving is all accurate and can be used to make conclusions about the questions that you are trying to answer. When calibrating, you must first open iLink on your desktop. It will usually be open, but sometimes you might have to open it. Once you hover over the button, it should say Start Tracker, as you can see on the screen. This should be the screen that shows as the iLink program opens. During calibration, we use a 9-target display on the PC monitor to ensure accuracy. To specify this, click on Set Options, and then click on the 3x3 grid. You also want to ensure that both eyes are being read. To do this, hit Select Configuration and make sure that the binocular slash monocular is selected. Hit Accept. This should also usually be set up, but to ensure accuracy, make sure to check. Then click on Camera Setup to go back to the setup screen. First, you want to make sure that the sample rate is set at 1K. This is the rate used by the Riley Lab. In the global view, you want to make sure that both eyes are clearly visible in the camera image and not too far off to the side, and make sure one eye is on either side of the dotted line. The red circle is the search limit, and it will only track the eye if it is within the circle. You can tap the center of the eye to make sure that the search limit surrounds the eye. The crosshairs indicate that the eye has been acquired. In zoom view, we want to make sure that the camera is properly focused. First, make sure that the threshold values are correct by selecting Auto Threshold. Then we should focus on the eye. The pupil is indicated by the dark blue color. We must click on the up and down arrows under the pupil to change the size of the dark blue circle. When you click on the up arrow for pupil, it will make the dark blue circle bigger. When you click on the up arrow for corneal, it will make the light blue point smaller. When the box lights up green, or if there is a black ring around the dark blue circle, you will know that the pupil has been set up correctly. With the corneal reflection, you want the light blue circle to be as small as possible and to not be in the middle of the pupil. The box for the corneal reflection should also light up green. You want to repeat this for the other eye. Once fixed, we should have the participant look at all four corners of the screen to make sure that the camera has a good view of the pupil, unobstructed by the corneal reflection in all corners of the screen. Then, we must calibrate. To begin, click on the Calibrate button. Instruct the participant to follow the white dot in the center of the black circle as it appears. Tell them to try not to anticipate where it's going to move next and keep their head steady. The current position of the eye shows up as a decursor on the screen. After the decursor shows up, or shows up on, or the closest it will get to the target, press the spacebar to put up the next target. Continue doing this until you have finished calibrating. The calibration should now be a 3x3 grid for each eye as shown. You may have to go back or try again if, the, if this does not show up. After you've finished your calibration, select Accept and it shall take you back to the camera setup screen. Then move on to validation. This process will look the same as calibration to this participant, but on the host PC, the eye cursor will now be the level of error. Repeat the same steps as you did with calibration to validate the eye movement. If they lose focus, tell them to look at a different corner of the screen, then look back at the target. Press the spacebar when it is the closest to the target. The cursor should be less than one away from the target. As you can see in the middle one, this is right on the mark and provides good, good results. With the top target, however, the left eye has a score of 1.6, which is too far off the mark to provide good results. If you get a bad reading for one of the eyes, just track using the other eye. If you are unhappy or need both eyes, Change the pupil and corneal measurements on the camera setup screen. Once you are happy with your results, press Accept. You will go back to the camera setup screen. You must then click Output and Record to start the experiment and continue with the experiment that you are trying to run. Thank you so much for listening.